Hey everybody, I'm Blitz. Welcome back to Blitzworks. So in our previous videos, we 3D printed a lot of quick, fun little prints that are easily shared through social media sites like Instagram, TikTok, and here on the YouTube Shorts platform. So these videos performed very well, uh, some of them well over a million views, which is really mind blowing for our team. So we decided to change things up just a little bit and create some longer videos, better produced and interesting challenges for ourselves. And the first one, we wanted to bring the level 1-1 of the NES version of Super Mario Brothers to life through 3D printing and stop motion animation. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you click on that little red button. It's see if we can hit 50,000 subscribers here this month it would be really amazing if we could. But if you've been living under a rock for the last 35 years and never heard of Super Mario Brothers before, you'd like to know that the original game came out in 1985 and level 1-1 is the classic level that basically served as the tutorial for maybe every single platforming game ever released and it's one of the greatest video game levels of all time and in addition to this the level layout has been reused numerous times by Nintendo in tons of other games like Super Mario Advanced 4, New Super Mario Brothers Wii, New Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Paper Mario, Super Mario Maker, Super 3, Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Maker, and to some extent in Brawl and even that weird battle royale game Super Mario Brothers 35. I'm sure I'm missing a few of those games, but you get the point. And this level is even iconic enough that IGN wrote an entire walkthrough for this level back in 2012. So the first thing we had to do is figure out how to actually convert this 2D level into something that we could print in the third dimension. Sure, we could do that old boring Western facade thing that they used in the old Western movies and just print that straight front profile view. But that's not really 3D printing. So we actually had to map out this thing and take inventory of what we needed to print. And we quickly found out that this project would be a lot bigger than we initially assumed. The level doesn't feel very big when you play it, but it's actually quite large. From start to finish, this map is 217 blocks long. And if we were to print each one of these blocks an inch, it would be about 18 feet long, which is roughly the height of an average male giraffe or the width of George Washington's mouth on Mount Rushmore. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that there's that secret shortcut coin room that's not really a secret because everybody knows about it. And if we jump down that one pipe, we can gather all of the coins, take the shortcut, and jump back up the other side. You're absolutely right, and that actually cuts down the overall length from 217 blocks back down to 138. But the best part is we can also split up the level into three separate scenes for the stop motion animation, and it would allow us to reuse some of the printed elements to not waste more filament and time with a 3D printer. In addition to this, we also decided on sizing down the blocks to a half an inch, which brought the project to a much more manageable length of about five feet long. Now that we had a good foundation and a plan for the base, we needed to figure out how to actually print the stuff. We originally thought it'd be a good idea to piece the base segments into printed blocks with a really low infill density, but each one of them would take an insane amount of filament and it would take roughly 165 hours to print all five of the bases that we need, which is incredibly wasteful. We quickly learned that it'd be a much better idea to just print the panels and then glue them together at a separate time. Now that we had the base figured out, we needed to determine how many different individual objects we needed to model and print to create World 1-1. So there's 16 Goombas in this level, one Koopa Trooper, 39 coins, a few varieties of pipes, a couple different blocks, a few different clouds, and even some bushes that nobody really cares about. Not to mention that 2D games like Super Mario Brothers are made out of sprites, which are basically a set of pixel art for each individual motion and scene and object in the game. This also means there's much more to Mario than meets the eye. His walk cycle has four different images and his jump cycle is one. And each additional power up like the mushroom and the star also add additional sprites. But for simplicity, we'll pretend that we actually listened and read IGN's walkthrough, and we'll use our newfound pro gamer skills to not get any upgrades for this print. Now to truly bring these 2D sprites to life, we need to use voxels. And you've heard of voxels before because that's basically how Minecraft is made. To put it simply, 2D Mario is composed of pixels that are working together to make a full image. So we need to convert those 2D Mario pixels into 3D little blocks called voxels. And if you're interested in seeing more about 3D modeling with voxels, leave a comment down below. And all of these models we created for this video are found on Tinkercad. Just follow that link down below in the video description to check it out for yourself. The other minor problem that we ran into was that the 3D pipes that we're going to print are going to be round. But in the game, it's basically a set of rectangles on top of each other. This is actually a common problem while building in Minecraft. So we did the best to follow a general circle shape and then extended that circle shape to the top of the pipe where we put on a slightly larger shape 
to create the top of the pipe. And then we did hollow it out so Mario could jump down inside. In hindsight, we really should have used the net fab repair tool to auto detect any errors with the model and then use the mesh repair tool to solidify the open faces the first time through to eliminate some of the problems that we did have printing. But that's what we get for trying to print remotely due to testing positive for the big sick. Uh, but don't worry, everybody's healthy now and we're back to making videos again. So now that we have all the digital assets created, the fun begins. The entire print time for this project, not including the failed prints, was about 157 hours and 45 minutes. And once the prints are actually finished, it's time for the best part, peeling them off of the bed. And stripping the supports is also very satisfying. So some of you 3D printing pros probably already noticed that we run a single extruder, which means that we can only print with one color of filament at a time. There are extruders that can print with multiple different colors, but we don't really have one of those right now. Mario himself is four base colors, and some of the other elements we're printing have shading and other things to them. And to print all of these colors on a 3D printer would take a lot of effort, so we did the next best thing and just painted them. And now that everything is printed and painted, it's time to assemble the scenes for the stop motion animation. The obvious idea is to suspend the blocks and Mario using fishing line attached to a rig above the map. And then in typical stop motion animation to make it move frame by frame as Mario plays through the level. And finally, here's the stop motion that you've all been waiting for. It's not entirely pixel perfect like some of you speedrunners might crave, but we think it turned out fantastically. Let us know what you think down below in the comments, and if you have any suggestions of other projects to tackle next, always just let us know. Make sure you do subscribe as well, it's free and it really helps the channel grow, and keep your stick on the ice. We'll catch you next time.